we have uh, a lot of different uh, cyber security features in the top The red ones are the new ones, the new features. The black ones are the older features. We introduced in the last year a lot of new cyber security features. For example, the maps uh, that we are going to take a look at it later. And the traffic rules and one of the vulnerabilities comes that instead the new call operator on today is going to take a long. The problem, however, with this uh, uh, lot of uh, tools we have uh, is that uh, very few of them are used, uh, or at least from the clients uh, I usually do support, uh, or because mostly of them uh, are not known. So, here today we are going to take a look at all the cyber security features we have on the page so that maybe you can use some uh, in your network. And uh, after I've shown uh, um, all the features, uh, we are going to take a look uh, at uh, real scenarios. I bought uh, three pickups, three pickups that we are going to analyze together at the end of the talk. And we are going to see what happened in, the, in those networks. First of all, let's start with alerts. Okay? Alerts uh, that I kind of already uh, have shown, like I kind of uh, told, uh, there are quite a bit of problems in the alerts. Alerts are problems generated by a top engine when it goes to analyze the problem. Okay? But uh, there are a few problems. So a lot of alerts are triggered most of the times. So um, a lot of times so people don't go, uh, don't check the alerts page because there are tons of alerts. And there are too many information most of the times. So the result, what is the result? That uh, people do not take a look at the alerts, but alerts are the fastest way to find a problem. So how can we reduce, uh, how can we um, remove these problems? There are some ways to remove those problems. Uh, we have, uh, first of all, to tune the alerts. Okay? There are different ways to tune the alerts. In mm -hmm. tuning the alerts, I mean, uh, for example, disable alerts not usable in your network because uh, we develop a lot of alerts, but the generic alerts. Maybe in your networks uh, you have some configuration that for generic alerts uh, you develop is not good. You have to fix and tune those alerts. For example, there are some alerts with thresholds. We, we add standard thresholds. For example, the score threshold alerts we are going to take a look at it later. Is a, an alert? that is going to trigger uh, an alert after an host exceeds a specific threshold. We put, for example, a standard of 1,000 score, because in our opinion, 1,000 score is pretty high. But in many networks, maybe tons of uh, flows, we are talking about networks with uh, 10,000 flows, or many more active flows, uh, maybe 1,000 score it could be a bit, uh, mm, a bit too few, maybe. So it's really important to tune the uh, Can you explain what is the score? Yeah. Uh, what is the score in a topology? The score is, is um, met, met, let's say, uh, we, <coughs> we add to the post and to the flows we have in a topology. And the score uh, depends on the severity of the alert. Okay? For example, we have uh, a DNS data exfiltration, like I have has shown before. DNS data exfiltration has, has a score around 300. 300 because it's a, a problematic flow. Okay? So the higher the score, the, the more serious the problem is. And this score is both for the flows, so for the DNS uh, exfiltration, the workflows, uh, the workflow key uh, get the 300 score, and for the specific host. 
So if an host um, has multiple different targets, for example, with uh, 100 per of score, it is going not to have 100 of score, but the sum of those scores. Another way to reduce the, the alerts is to exclude them. Okay? With the Enterprise M license, uh, we had the possibility uh, last year to exclude the targets, specific targets, uh, with specific posts. We are going to take a look at it. And obviously, the problem with alerts uh, is even with recitals. If you have tons of, of uh, alerts, uh, you are not going to deliver those alerts to your telegram because uh, it is going to spawn the telegram. You have to tune those alerts to reduce uh, even the noise on the telegram, for example. These are examples. Okay? For example, ProFood alert. What is ProFood? ProFood is uh, a usual kind of attack, this is uh, done in most of the networks, meaning that they know to send a lot of flows towards your network. Even this is flows uh, with just uh, the beginning of a three way and shape. But it is going to flood uh, your network. We see, for example, that in these networks we have 28 flows. This is uh, obviously our. Uh, our networks in the office, so uh, it has a few flows. But we see that we have 28 active flows currently. Meaning that uh, 60 flows per second done by an host, maybe it's too high as a threshold. Because if we have an average of active flows of 30, maybe we want to see the flow through the, as fast as we uh, as fast as we can. So we can lower this threshold. At the same time, count this contacts. It uh, trigger an alert when uh, an host is going to to, to, to contact a number of different countries per second, per minute. Sorry. So if um, one host is going to contact, I don't know, USA, USA. Italy and uh, French, uh, I don't know. It is three contacts in, in the minutes. This is a closed network, so we shouldn't have many, many of the times uh, contacts to work uh, nations. Okay? <coughs> so maybe we have to lower then this uh, counter to a couple, three at most uh, uh, contacts per minute. Here is the page uh, with the alerts. We are going to jump to the top of the right now. So let's jump to the top of the To access the alerts, obviously alerts and the explorer. Here we have the summary of the alerts. We do not have good alerts. So just to check them, we are taking a look at the last known files. Okay. First of all, uh, before starting analyzing how to reduce uh, those alerts, we added, uh, um, we divided the alerts in another two categories. The required attention one, so the one selected right now and the old alerts. We found that uh, some flows, uh, some, uh, some alerts has required information because uh, with the old alerts we have tons of alerts. With the required uh, uh, attention alerts we just ping uh, the most uh, important one in the dashboard. In this way you are, you know, we have the rest of uh, alerts. For example, we have the NS data exfiltration here as an alert. Now, taking a look at this page, how are you going to reduce uh, the alerts? Do you have any idea of how to tune, for example, these alerts, or which do you want to you put it in this page? 
the one with the lowest uh, scores. Yes, that's right. For example, we would put ratio. We would put ratio. I'm not quite interested in this algorithm. So what can we do? For example, we can disable it. That's disable the algorithm. Any host disable checks. <coughs> okay. Now this algorithm is disabled. Another one that you are going to should, for example, exclude them. You could exclude them. I would exclude, for example, the non protocol on the standard port towards this server because uh, it uh, does HTTP uh, traffic on port 88. For example, for Hello, it is uh, a common to do this. So, this is just um, extra noise on this page. So, for example, let's uh, exclude this alert for this server because. Uh, for this <coughs> In this way, after tuning all those alerts, we are going to have, uh, instead of the uh, important alerts we are going to, we are interested in. This is just an example to show you how to tune those alerts uh, for your network. <coughs> And after tuning the alerts, other than uh, being more useful even the recycles, because for example, let's jump back to the end uh, I tuned the alerts, and now I can send, for example, the alerts to Which alerts I added here? I added, like uh, you can see it here, two alerts, two specific alerts. Active monitoring and the vulnerability scan changes. In this way, I'm going to, for example, to receive an alert on Telegram whenever one of the uh, hosts in my network goes down. This is an example. In this way, you are alerted whenever you want to be alerted. And uh, after tuning the alerts, even other features become a lot more useful. For example, the pro alerts <coughs> analyzer. This is uh, a bubble chart, it is called a bubble chart. What it is a bubble chart? It is, uh, it is a really interesting chart because uh, most of the times it goes by the idea of the auto area. What it is an auto area? An observation that deviates much from other observations. So a strange observation, you can call it. You can see that most of the observations are towards the center, the center of the chart. So towards the zero zero. The one we want to take a look at instead are the one most uh, of most distant from the center. In this way, we can uh, easily find outliers. So uh, those hosts that probably are infected or have some kind of problems. And with this idea, we have the OSMA. The OSMA is the same idea. We still use the bubble chart. The host map it is uh, a map that displays you all the hosts in, the, in, in your network, okay? both remote and local. We can see from this chart that all the hosts are mostly towards the zero zero. The one instead we are interested in, which are the outlayer. So, for example, this one, these two hosts. And mostly <coughs> this one. This is the most distant from the center. In fact, if, if we take a look at this uh, host, it has a score of 80,000. Okay? This is probably infected or has problems for sure. Otherwise, it, it, it shouldn't have uh, 80,000 scores. Now, uh, we took a look at how to tune the alerts and uh, which kind of maps we can use uh, to get the alerts. Okay? Now instead we are taking a look at uh, the host activity trade. What does it mean with host activity trade? 
we mean that in a top engine we have some tools, some features that are able to understand when the host is connected from the network, when it was the first time that uh, connected to the network. In this way, we can keep track of what the host needs in your network. So, with the host trading, uh, trading uh, our idea is to detect the host connecting to the network with malicious intentions, obviously. And uh, there are a few ways to do this. We have uh, the device with other trading that we are going to take a look at right now. The inactive local host, this is the first time in NetOpenG that we added uh, some features uh, to keep tracking for posts, but inactive posts, not for your posts. Usually, in SOPNG, we delete, we delete uh, information about uh, no more active posts, flows, and so on. Instead, in, in, with the inactive local posts, our idea is to keep track of those flows. And then we can add even SMP and SMP flows uh, together. But let's start with device color staking. Like uh, the name suggests, this is a page on which EntopNG uh, um, is going to keep track of all the hosts of all the devices connected to the network. Keep track of the IP addresses used by that uh, specific device, hardware <coughs> obviously and other information, but most mostly important is the first mm -hmm. and last scene. In this way, you can understand if uh, a malicious host connected directly, I don't know, with uh, a computer, some people, uh, some person, sorry, uh, connected to directly to your network, you can see the device, the address of the device, which IP it used, so you can track its activity by using the cycle flows, for example, you can mm, understand what uh, he did in, during that time that he was alive, that he was uh, in the network, and when he connected and disconnected. This is interesting uh, because uh, not only you can keep track of, the, of those devices, but uh, think uh, on a wider way. Um, think you have been across the network, okay? In a network with uh, um, specific devices that uh, has to be connected, or uh, you know that uh, not more than those two devices has to be connected to the network. For example, in our uh, office, in our office we have uh, 10, 12 uh, devices. We know that at most uh, we four connect to the network. So no more than those uh, 16 devices should connect to the network. If one more of those connects, there is something wrong. There is something strange. In this way, in this stage, using this tool, this feature, we can even decide to trigger an alert whenever a not allowed device connects to the network. So we register by clicking the graphs or by using the learning, the learning uh, feature. Uh, it's just for, I don't know, a couple of hours, it keeps track of those devices uh, and then it stores those devices in this page. You keep track of those uh, devices, you put them as a loud, and whenever a new device connects to your network, it triggers an alert. In this way, we can go back to the alerts field. If we tune it that correctly, we have an alert direct to entire or by email of new devices that of new device that connected to the network that shouldn't be there. Um, then we have the inactive local host. It has the same idea, but uh, different from the other one. We do not keep track of the, the device, but we keep track of the host, so by the IP information. This is interesting because uh, obviously we keep just the local host, 
because uh, with, uh, we have to keep track of the remote code so we need larger networks. Uh, it should uh, use a lot of uh, CPU runs and so on. So we decided just to keep track of uh, work outputs. In this way, you can understand when a QN host, the local host connected to the, to the network, uh, goes down. So when uh, you cannot see it anymore. And uh, you can even <coughs> track of other information, for example, the name on which uh, connected to the network. Lastly, we have, uh, regarding the, the post tracking, we have SMP. SMP, um, we have the support to two different protocols, LLDP and CDP. Okay? Cisco Discovery Protocol and uh, Wingway Discovery Protocols. Two protocols, really interesting because they keep tracks of posts connected to the specific device. device yeah. uh, to a specific device. So, the new host connects to the switch, to a specific switch. Mm -hmm. We are going to know that on that host, on that microtic, for example, on the interface index 2, for the first time, you have seen this MAC address using this IP. In this way, you can even understand uh, exactly physically where that host connects, connected to your network. And all those information can be um, used to analyze the network. For example, first, uh, before we had seen um, a host, a device that connected to the network with the MAC address tracking, uh, if you remember, there was a denied one. So we want to understand what uh, that host, that device did. How can we do that? Just uh, connect to the historical flows, and you see, you keep track of all those uh, information. Let's directly take a look at uh, the top engine, so we can understand better how to do that. The last one has Let's see if there is a denied. Okay. For example, we have three denied uh, devices connected to the Let's see, for example, this one. This one, that it is the most recent one, it was uh, disconnected and now in the future. Let's jump to the station close. And here, you can see the activity that that host. In that way, why this is useful? Because in that way, in this way, you can even uh, isolate the host that probably that host, and if it was a malicious host, that tried to infect. So you know which host that they tried to infect, and then you can start analyzing even those hosts. For example, we see that this host, this device, did SMP traffic towards uh, um, devil, did the SMP traffic towards that host. So we should, uh, what we should we do here? with the tuning idea I told you before. We know that uh, devil connected to that host by using a SMP. So it means probably that that host has SMP as a SMP endpoint. And it is probably a you host know, inside our network. So the right use host. So what should we do? We should uh, allow that host Okay, because uh, the only traffic we, we see here is uh, SMP traffic from a devil with this engine towards that host. So that host didn't do anything wrong. So we should keep uh, that host as allowed, and in that way we are not going to see any more than that other. Lastly, let's talk about flow tracing. We have seen flow tracing. Now let's take a look at flow tracing. 
By analyzing, uh, by searching for problems in the network, we uh, can even start not just from host, because uh, from host we probably have to see some, I don't know, uh, inactive phones that should enter the, there, the device that <coughs> should connect to the network, and so on. Many times, instead, we see a lot of uh, suspicious traffic by taking a look at those. And there are different ways to do that. First of all, let's start taking a look at the maps. We have three different maps. We have the service map. Uh, the service map is really useful because uh, um, here we track all the local traffic. Okay? Traffic done between local hosts. Why is this useful? For lateral movements mostly. Lateral movements, what are? A host is infected and trying to infect all the other hosts in your network. This is uh, useful for that purpose. Because in, that, in this way, you can understand, for example, here we have uh, one, two, and three folks uh, that are most of, um, most of the traffic is done towards those three folks. So we can check those, but probably those are servers in our networks. For example, the S server. SMTP server. But the most important one, are the one with just uh, traffic between these two posts, for example. Why you have two posts communicating mm -hmm. by themselves? <coughs> so, um, with the service map, it is possible to keep track of the services inside the network. You know, for example, that, uh, I don't know, DNS traffic on towards uh, the post tether that we have seen before. Um, down on port 22 is right. Okay. In, with the service map, we can check that uh, flow as okay. And we are done. Whenever instead we see, for example, the NS traffic on port 8080, the, the, the service map it is going to trick even other. Again, we go way back to the others. The service map is, is even useful because uh, in this way you can even find possible <coughs> points. Because if you see traffic in your local post towards ports that shouldn't be open, why is that that kind of traffic? The periodicity map instead has the same idea as the from the service map, but this to keep <coughs> Periodic flows. Periodic flows are so done both um, between local posts and remote posts. <coughs> this is uh, really useful to discover observation frequencies of periodic flows towards posts. Why should this be useful? For example, um, for the <coughs> Uh, for the botnet, the botnet, uh, you, uh, you should know, do you know what, it, what the botnet is, first of all? Okay. Host inside the botnet, what do, what do they do, usually? Sure. They send traffic towards uh, the head of the botnet, let's say, to say, hey, I'm ready, like, I'm ready whenever you want. That is periodic flows. Every, I don't know, every day, it sends the puppets just towards the, the head of the botnet to say, if, uh, if you want to use me, I'm ready. In this way, periodic mark is really useful. Let's see on a quotation. Here you can see, for example, the periodic flows from boom to boom. And uh, we can see, if we jump to the table format, uh, the number of rooms, <coughs> duration, and the frequency. Yeah. So this flow never talks towards the NS Google uh, every more or less 61 seconds.
Lastly, we have the asset market. Another important thing to know about your network is what your assets are. So, servers. Yes, yeah, server, server, email server. Because there are even some kinds of attack where hosts um, tell to keep other local hosts in your network <laughs> they are in a DNS server. Well, that is not true. In that way, the, the local hosts in your network are going to contact those malicious DNS servers and that way be infected. In this way, you can keep track of uh, every SMTP server in this case here. Lastly, we have uh, the server ports analysis. The server ports analysis uh, uh, is another chart again to display this time <coughs> the, the traffic done towards uh, specific ports. So, for example, in this interface, we have the uh, traffic towards port uh, port four, 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 five. This is strange. Here we can start analyzing again by jumping to the historical clause, we are in some clause, to understand if there is something wrong with this clause. At the same time, for example, there is a SMTP server, um, SMTP traffic towards post 2500. Here again, another strange thing. Traffic tools uh, and vulnerability scans. Uh, lastly, is going to cooperate on today to show those information and more. So we will wait uh, for the uh, Obviously, uh, this is an old feature. Um, another way to mm -hmm. find problems in any purchase is by using these micro charts. So checking the traffic, mm -hmm. the networks of the host to understand if there is some problem with the traffic. You can see that usually we have uh, 400 uh, megabit per second. Here we have more or less 100 megabit per second. There was a problem here, so we can drill down to that specific space and, and understand what happened. If we take a look at the traffic, uh, if you drill down on the page again, there is a table showing the, the protocol used. We can see that uh, usually we have uh, 75 terabytes of TLS. In that uh, period of time, we have uh, 27 terabytes. So probably one of those uh, exporters, there are multiple exporters uh, sending traffic towards this application. One of those exporters comes down. So half of the data, one third of the data, uh, is not sent. Okay, enough problem. So let's instead take a look at the end potential. <coughs> I prepared three pickups that we are going to analyze by using all those features I have shown you right now. And uh, we, we will try to understand what happened in those three situations. So let's jump to the page. And uh, let's start, uh, I think, with the most uh, interesting notion of the Okay. We have this pickup. Where uh, do you start analyzing this traffic? Where do you start? This is uh, a situation of live traffic. So the alerts we can see from the alerts page are just uh, the current reactive one. So as you can see, there are post targets uh, regarding the score. score so alerts is obviously an interesting one, starting point. Now, well, uh, where do you go? We see that uh, there is some strange behavior from this host. So what should we do? Should we analyze this host or not?
Personally, I jump to this poster and try to understand what kind of flows it is going to do. <coughs> so let's jump to this poster. Okay, let's probably see something interesting. The Christian post. So it means that uh, this host is one in one of the vectors we have in the property. It is a remote host, and uh, even if we want to analyze that host, we can even jump to a few uh, uh, IP or virus total weeks to understand what kind of host we are facing. Sorry? <laughs> Why did you choose just uh, the exact other address? Hmm? Did you know this? In the previous page, mm -hmm. why did you choose exactly these? For this reason, score threshold exceeded. I put a threshold of 1000, and this host had okay. 900,000, So it was uh, strange, that kind of. Uh, and why the score is always the same? It's always the same. For this alert, let's jump to this alert. <coughs> this is an alert that triggers an alert when the score of the host exceeds the function of the score. I added the score of 1000 and uh, the standard that holds that 99,000. Here we cannot get any other important information, but we have enough uh, information to run this post. <laughs> okay. In this uh, <coughs> outcome, we have another problem. Where we have another problem. Where uh, would you go to find the other problem? Personally, we do not, we do know nothing about this network. So I first, first of all, jump to the maps, the service, periodicity, and asset point to understand first of all which are the assets in this network. So you can keep track of the servers uh, that uh, this network has. Periodic flows to understand if the, there is some strange periodic flows going in this network. And service map to understand if this then we have some problem with the okay. okay, we have just Google Campus, it's totally different time, but we can see that there are just 24 Google Campus. 
And uh, if we jump to the keyboard format, we just see, yeah, exactly uh, from the last scene to call it uh, analyze one here in keyboard. Nothing strange. Um, just one flow between these two hosts. Uh, one flow between two hosts. Uh, it is not usually something strange. Usually, if uh, we have lateral movements, we are going to see more than just one flow. Okay. So let's jump instead to the delivery schema. And here we see instead something strange. We have different green posts. All of them trying to talk, as you see from the arrow, with uh, our people post. So let's see instead from the delivery. And here, uh, what we want to understand is the, the most, uh, the flows with the most observation. So let's sort the sort by observation. And we see that we have uh, uh, four, let's say, interesting flows. Communications. All these remote folks are trying to talk with this live network.com host. So let's uh, see. Um, Instead, the flows Let's see instead what kind of flows we have here. So let's go to that host and see instead. Let's analyze this host. Here we have nothing strange, not twisted. Again, we have some kind of problem with up the post, 132. We have uh, 41 day uh, uh, flows here, so it could be strange, but we don't know. And nothing else strange, 700 score, and it's not in the eye. However, we've seen that this host is doing periodic following, let's say, trying to connect the periodic with the host. She could be alright or not. And here we have the answer. We have a total of. Uh, 133 flows, sorry, yeah, using HD, so something strange. If not, the coordinate, as you can see, all the flows not found. So it means that this host is asking to this host some information not found. In your opinion, what uh, he is trying to we have many not found information and then we not found. He's trying to enumerate the network uh, exactly. the web server. Exactly. As you can see, the request has the same format. <coughs> He's trying to scan the host, trying to understand the web, web application. Yeah. 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 In fact, we are taking a look at uh, that information request for PHP PHP IAP. What so my S and B he's trying to get the information about the means in WordPress. This is the first uh, pickup. So we have seen that uh, this <coughs> network has had two problems, two main problems. The first one uh, a lot of uh, traffic. The second one a lot of uh, scan. If we are going to take a look at the other flows and the other host, they were doing the same thing. So this was <coughs> probably an attempt to discover that network, to discover information about that network, and it probably succeeded because we had a malware inside the network. Uh, okay, let's jump instead to the second example. Let's jump to the video. Where would you jump? Uh, this has uh, the traffic. So we are in a small network. So where would you jump? Close, for example, we could 
some from here. <coughs> okay, we have uh, 60 hierarchical codes. We can take a look at all the status we have and the problem we have. <coughs> we do not see, we see something strange, but nothing uh, back before. What uh, do you do? You want to jump to one of these goals? I don't know. The host is the, the client. Uh, so <coughs> so we use a multiple words. It works as uh, the same. Uh, the same set. Okay. So maybe it's trying to. So let's take a look at this. Yeah. First of all, there's uh, thirty articles. We do not see something strange except for the 600 uh, score that uh, before it was nothing, 600 score. Now we have uh, 17 total codes uh, with a uh, total of 55 codes. So here, 600 score could be something interesting. <coughs> total codes uh, we have 55. So let's see, let's start by the other one. Okay, let's see. Active flows, uh, as you can see, all the times uh, this is great code. Okay. Mm, personally, I don't want to see something strange except for this one. Uh, we can also take, we can take a look at targets, but again, this is this is that could be something to say. Because uh, we see this the one less extension of this is the SN. We have two periodic flow, so we can again take a look at the windows periodic flows. This is connection and this is connection I use, but mostly we have the LS problem that So let's see at those TLS groups. I start from them. Uh, let's uh, I sort from score, obviously, because we want to find the problem starting from the most directed uh, of those, because probably from there you can start your analyzing the other. <coughs> okay. We have a common TLS flow. Yeah, with uh, the same amount of traffic, so even from the traffic point of view, there is nothing strange. The only thing we know is that uh, it is missing some less information. It is it has a <coughs> less capability too long, but it shouldn't be employed the right thing. Nothing to be problematic, but it has only a score of 50 million. And uh, TLS not probably carrying HD. So means that uh, this is not HTTPS. Okay. Where would you jump? <coughs> what would you, you analyze after uh, Do you want to see any other information about this flow? I don't know. We have nothing uh, like before really strange about this host, this probe, sorry, and that host. So probably we have something strange. We saw an interesting thing uh, that uh, he told before. It is mostly a client host. Okay? He's doing traffic towards 
e no step with no domain. Just starting from here, there is something special. Mm. Usually, among post and the domain, okay. But uh, it would be uh, not a problem. If not, <coughs> <coughs> all the flows backwards from the last one. All of those that we told before, starting from different train points. We talked about uh, before of the periodicity map and the possibility to detect this host is inside the box. This constantly sending traffic towards this host that it is from the bottom to tell the botnet itself that it is a guy. In fact, if we jump from here to the map, to the periodic map, we are going to see that uh, there is a periodic flow towards this host. And there are quite a few, uh, quite a few flows towards that host with uh, a specific context. OK, so first uh, we have seen, uh, we have listed uh, a scanned host, a scanned server, infected by one. Now we have seen nodes inside the modular. And now we are going to take a look at the last table. Okay. <coughs> now with that, where uh, would you start analyzing the We have the gap we are again uh, in a small network. It's not uh, that big. Where do we start analyzing again? Do we start from ours, from the box, from the flows? Where do you want to start analyzing? I start uh, first. I think I will get this to ours. There are few, we can start from there. Two post hours. It's called threshold exit. Again, we have two posts at this time, but not just one. But two posts mm -hmm. with uh, an IR score. If we think uh, about, uh, to, about uh, what we told before, we have these two posts with uh, 300 flows with uh, 4,000 scores. This is strange. If we said, uh, in, in fact, sorry, we jump to the host page, uh, take a look at the host page. <coughs> okay. And uh, we take a look at this score. Uh, the problem. One of these two posts. Uh, in fact, uh, we see that uh, most of this code is pretty low. 300 flows uh, should be low. What we have is that two posts with higher score. So I start analyzing, first of all, uh, the recent one, because probably we can start from understanding more information about uh, the name of one, and then I start jump, I jump the name of one. So let's uh, take a look at this first. Okay, uh, 43 are the pros. We are ready. So the score, the score of this time has, is uh, as a server. So we can just here, there is something to say, okay? Uh, okay. mm, we know that uh, his name is done, that is uh, discovered from PLS. Well, uh, what do you look at now? This is not much of a twist. So, 
to be right, right before, not. Personally, I jump, for example, to by the stopper, when I use uh, IPB, because the yeah, is not characteristic. But when you not know, maybe it is something new mm -hmm. in the new post, in this new post. So I jump there. Let's jump there. Something interesting that I found. It is triggered as malware from a fortinet and other core information. <coughs> Four or five on 89 uh, poster has uh, marked this host as malware. It is just something to take a look at. Then uh, I jump uh, maybe to the close again in the same uh, Part as before. The crystal flow. The crystal flow. We have the crystal flow, periodic flow, the rest of the image DPS. Something we have to take a look at because uh, <coughs> on 43 flows. We have 43 acoustic flows and 34 of those are periodic, periodic flows. So let's take a look, for example, at the first one. I don't know. Okay. The first one has three problems. We have acoustic flow. Okay. Here has certificate set the same sign. We already hear something strange. So usually, uh, in also is not going to accept fine, it's the TLS certificate. And TLS, not getting HTTPS. So we have our local host contacting his own host with answer from the server so that we have twisted the uh, probably the web twisted the server answer it, so it is not just a one way connection, it is a bidirectional connection, like pockets and ten pockets. We hold those information and uh, strange things. We can take a look at uh, the table of the flow, maybe some. <coughs> find something strange. So, I don't see something strange here, except for the web host. We have to go with TLS not having the HTTPS, and some of those goals towards that host are premium goals. What could this be? Here we just uh, in your opinion, what could it be? The server is a malware server, probably, because it was uh, it has from by installer from the full debut and the uh, user ID is simply as malware. I noticed uh, that uh, a little above uh, there are the four, the, four uh, the, the hand shake of the TCP. See, like, feel it is just like a Keep alive uh, a sort of uh, periodic communication <coughs> just to, start to keep it uh, yeah. uh, available for, for the future. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. So, what could it be? You have you told the, uh, the answer. This would be a vector. For this would be a vector because, in fact, this is a market, this is a pickup. Where uh, this host, this local host, uh, this one, was infected <coughs> with uh, the classic mail relay. A malware was downloaded with the periodic flows. We had nine periodic flows in the status uh, drop down. Nine periodic flows, meaning that this host did 
design period it goes towards the server where it downloaded the, the malware. Then we started creating a backdoor for uh, that remote first. And this is the third one. So I hope uh, you understood uh, the top NG security tools, say, and I hope you will use those uh, in the future. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, one of your hosts uh, is probably one issue, so let's say. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Yeah. Do you have any questions? Or did it all clear?